Jupiter's moon Europa is a fascinating world with a salty subsurface ocean. There is a sea on the moon Europa. In fact, Europa has twice as much water as Earth does. Europa has an ocean. Europa actually has twice the amount of water that Earth does. 71% of the Earth's area is water, which is necessary for life. People on Earth see so much water all the time that it's hard to think why the rest of the solar system doesn't have the same amount. But that's how things really are. Many places have been searched in search of signs of water anywhere in our world. NASA just stated that the James Webb Telescope has found not only water on Jupiter's moon Europa, but also an ocean there. This amazing find has changed the way scientists think about all of space. Come with us as we learn more about this finding and how it changes the field of science. Jupiter isn't like other planets. It's one of the most interesting big planets in the solar system. Being almost 11 times bigger than Earth, it stands over us with a diameter of 143,000 kilometers. In order to give you an idea of how huge Jupiter is, its volume is thought to be over 1,431 times bigger than Earth's. In fact, it's so big that it's bigger than all the other worlds in our solar system put together. This also means that it has a strong gravitational field, pulling more than 2.5 times stronger than Earth's. It is important to be aware of Jupiter's gravity pull. With a gravity of about 24.79 meters per second squared, which is more than twice that of Earth, it has a big effect on how things behave and on people who might want to visit. Jupiter has a very strong gravity pull that shapes its changing atmosphere and interesting weather patterns, such as the Great Red Spot and its famous bands of clouds and swirling storms. But Jupiter's huge number of moons is one of the most interesting things about it. There are an amazing 80 moons of Jupiter, and 57 of them are officially accepted by scientists. The International Astronomical Union still needs to identify and name the other 23 moons, but they will soon be official moons too. Jupiter has many moons, but the four biggest ones are especially important. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto are the Galilean moons. They were found by Galileo Galilei and Simon Marius separately in 1610, which was a major event in the history of science. People are interested in the Galilean moons because they are both historically important and pretty big. Their mass makes them bigger than even the known dwarf planets, making them some of the biggest things in our solar system. We can say for sure that these moons are very big. Europa and Ganymede, the two closest moons to Jupiter in Galilee, have an interesting orbital interaction with each other. This means that their orbital periods are in a harmonic relationship, with Ganymede going around twice for every circle of Europa and Io going around four times in the same amount of time. In a way, this makes Jupiter's moon system sound more harmonious. Jupiter has more moons than just the Galilean group. Jupiter is thought to have about 100 irregular moons with diameters greater than one kilometer and another 500 smaller backward moons with diameters as small as 0.8 kilometers. Because their own gravitational pools are smaller, these irregular moons often have irregular shapes. This shows how varied Jupiter's moon family is. Each of Jupiter's moons is different in terms of its size, composition, and geological traits. The biggest moon in our solar system is Ganymede. It is a real giant among moons. For that reason, its huge size makes it an interesting place to study and visit. But things get interesting in Europa. In the world of science, Europa is very important because it is the sixth biggest moon in the solar system and the fourth largest moon of Jupiter. Europa has a very smooth surface, which is one of its most interesting qualities. The surface is so smooth that it is the smoothest of any solid body in the solar system. While most planets in the solar system, like Mars, have rough terrain and interesting traits, this one doesn't have any of those. Even though Europa's surface looks mostly smooth, it has some interesting designs. 
The moon has a few very tall hills, but the tallest ones are only a few hundred meters high. This small rise adds to the soft beauty of Europa's surface, where big craters aren't common, which suggests that the planet's geological past has been active and changing over time. Things get even more interesting though. You see, Europa's spin is tidally locked, which means that one side of the moon is always facing Jupiter. The gravitational pull of two stellar bodies makes one side of a moon always face its parent planet, in this case Jupiter. This is called tidal locking. In other words, Europa spins on its axis so that the same side of the moon always faces the gas giant Jupiter. This is different from our moon whose side faces the sun all the time. Because of this event, Europa has a unique climate. One side of the moon is always facing Jupiter, which makes the surface conditions very different on the leading and following hemispheres. When Europa moves around Jupiter, the leading hemisphere faces the direction of motion and feels stronger tides. The following hemisphere, on the other hand, faces away from the motion and feels much weaker tides. The tides that Jupiter sends out cause Europa's core to bend and deform. Because of these tidal forces, the moon is constantly being stretched and squeezed, which creates heat inside the moon. This is called tidal heating. This heating by the tides is a key part of keeping Europa's geological action going and shaping its unique features. When compared to Earth's moon, Europa is a little smaller. It's thought to have a stacked structure with an iron core, a rocky mantle, and a huge ocean of salty water below its icy crust, which was a surprise to everyone. The depth of this ocean below the surface is thought to be between 40 and 100 miles, which is many times deeper than Earth's seas. It is thought that Europa's seas below the surface hold an amazing amount of water, about twice the volume of all of Earth's oceans put together. As we all know, water is an important part of life, so this huge body of flowing water is very important. Europa's ocean is a top choice for further study and research because it might be a good place to live. However, how do we know for sure that the moon does have an ocean? Observations and scientific studies from different fields have come together to learn more and prove that it exists. Data from the Hubble Space Telescope and later the James Webb Space Telescope strongly show that there is a global ocean below the ice of Europa. It is very important to use spectroscopic data to learn about Europa's composition, its surface, and how it connects to the ocean below. For this method to work, the light that Europa either reflects or gives off is carefully studied across a range of colors. This gives scientists useful information about the chemical and physical makeup of the moon's surface. When scientists carefully look at Europa's spectral fingerprints, they can tell that the moon's surface is full of water ice. A key part is water ice, which shows how much frozen water there is in the form of ice crystals or ice grains. The discovery of water ice is important because it suggests that there is a source of water that may go below the surface. Spectroscopic tests have shown that Europa's surface has more than just water ice. It also has salts. People think that these salts came from the ocean below, but they could have been brought to the top by things like cryovolcanism or geological activity. Besides that, spectroscopic research has also shown that Europa's surface has organic molecules. Organic molecules are made up of substances that are based on carbon and are the building blocks of all living things. Why is it so important to learn about the unique spectral fingerprints of different materials? That helps scientists learn more about the surface of Europa, including what it's made of, where it is located, and how it behaves. They can figure out how common different chemicals are and how their distribution changes over space. Spectroscopic readings are usually taken by instruments on spacecraft that go by Europa or circle it. Scientists can get detailed spectra that show the unique fingerprints of different materials 
by looking at the reflected sunlight or heat emissions from the moon's surface. Then, these measurements are compared to theory models and experiments done in the lab to figure out what the materials on Europa's surface are made of and how they behave. Yes, but that's only the beginning. Important information about Europa's magnetic field has also come from spacecraft efforts like NASA's Galileo. This adds to the evidence of the ocean. The results of these tests show that there is a magnetic field around the moon, which suggests that there is a conductive fluid inside it. The most likely explanation for this conductive fluid is an ocean of salty water that reacts with Jupiter's strong magnetic field to create the magnetic signature that can be seen. Scientists have looked very closely at the magnetic field's strength, direction, and changes over time to figure out how deep, wide, and salty the ocean might be. It also gives us information about how the ocean moves and changes over time, like whether there are currents and how they interact with the ice shell above. Besides all of that, magnetic field data can also help scientists figure out how the moon works and what structures are inside it. It gives us information about the conductivity and makeup of the materials below the surface, which helps us figure out how the ocean and Europa's rocky core are connected. The readings of the moon's magnetic field also help us learn more about its geophysical activity, like tectonic movements or hydrothermal vents, which may be caused by the ocean interacting with the moon's interior. And that's not all. Thermal devices and sensors are also very important for studying Europa's surface and figuring out how warm the ocean below is. These cutting-edge tools are needed to record the heat signatures and watch how the temperatures change, which in turn gives us useful information about the complicated energy transfers happening between the huge ocean and Europa's icy crust. By measuring these thermal qualities in great detail, they can improve their models and learn more about how heat moves and stays stable inside Europa's interesting planetary body. With the help of these detailed thermal readings, we can get a better idea of the constantly changing processes going on below the surface of Europa. We can learn more about the ocean by using surface imaging and maps. Scientists can get a good look at Europa's surface by using improved high-resolution imaging methods and accurate mapping methods. Researchers are learning more about the complex fractures, ridges, and other geological features that might hold important clues about the water by carefully looking at these very detailed pictures. This is an important part of mapping the mysterious scenery of Europa. Scientists can make detailed maps that reveal the secrets of the deep ocean by carefully writing down and drawing where these rock formations are found and how big they are. It gets easier to understand how the moon's complicated interior works with each new picture taken and geological feature found. But that's not the most important thing here. Imaging and mapping the surface are very important for finding places that future exploration trips might be interested in going. Our current focus may be on using tools like the James Webb Space Telescope. However, in the future, robots or even people may make it to the surface, and that can't happen until we know everything we can from afar. Scientists can choose which areas are most important for further research by learning about them. For example, they can learn about places where there is busy geological activity or where the icy shell may be thinner. The way forward for future trips to Europa will be shown by these pictures. NASA is already getting ready for projects that will be sent to Europa to find out more about it. NASA's Europa Clipper is one of these much-anticipated projects. The goal of this groundbreaking journey, which is set to begin in October 2024, is to find out more about Europa. Its major job is to find out if the underground ocean could be a place where people could live. The spaceship will be in orbit around Jupiter instead of Europa itself, making careful moves to make about 40 to 50 close flybys of Europa. The spacecraft can scan almost the whole moon and get accurate readings and data by changing this flight path for each encounter. 
Scientists on the Europa Clipper project want to find out if there are conditions on Europa that could support life. The mission isn't really meant to find life itself, but it is trying to find places below Europa's icy surface where life might be able to survive and grow. At this point, experts are 100% sure that there is an ocean of liquid water below Europa's crust. The spacecraft will do a thorough study to see if the planet could support life. The Europa Clipper mission is ready to do a very thorough study because it has a very advanced scientific payload. The spacecraft will have a group of high-tech tools on board that are meant to collect important data and pave the way for in-depth studies of Europa's surface and interior. These tools will take accurate measurements, look at the Moon's magnetic field, measure surface temperatures, find out how thick and what kind of materials make up the icy crust, and give us a full picture of Europa's interesting features, basically everything we've been doing from afar, but up close. The Europa Clipper will fly by Europa 44 times over the course of its 3.5-year mission at heights ranging from 25 to 2,700 kilometers. Each pass will give scientists a chance to gather important data and learn more about the Moon's habitability, sometimes from a completely different angle and other times just to add to the information they already have. With all the information they get from this journey, scientists hope to find out what's hidden beneath Europa's icy surface and learn more about this interesting object in the solar system. The Europa Clipper project has a lot of potential to help us learn more about possible habitable planets in our solar system and get answers to deep questions about whether or not there is life beyond Earth. There could be a whole society hidden under the ice, but we'll have to wait for the Europa Clipper to find out for sure. What do you think? Is it really possible? Write your answer in the box below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to see more movies like it. See you in the next one.